Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Cole with Vision Miner, and today I want to talk about the future of motorsports. What I have here is a bell housing for a one-off transmission made in carbon fiber nylon for our buddy Mike Burroughs at Stanceworks. Now, we printed this for him because he didn't have a printer big enough, but more so than that, I want to talk about the importance of this part I'm holding in my hand. This is for, like I said, a one-off transmission coming from Australia he's having built for him. Now, to check fitment, they designed and we printed this part. Why is that important? Imagine the time and money lost if for some reason this transmission showed up and did not mate perfectly. What are your options? You either send it to a machine shop or have to send it back to Australia. We're talking weeks and thousands of dollars. But with a little magic from additive manufacturing, we can ensure fitment instantly. This took about a couple hours to print, and now Mike came, he tried it out, we know it fits, and it works. Let's go, Matt. The first thing I thought of when that, this idea was presented was if you've watched the Amazon series, which is actually the precursor and the inspiration for Drive to Survive called, I think it's called Grand Prix Racer, it follows McLaren around for their 2017 season. In the first episode, McLaren got delivery of their Honda power unit very late, very behind schedule for getting the car completed for testing. The engine showed up and it didn't fit because they didn't have, um, they didn't get the dimensions right in their CAD and the, there was a miscommunication between Honda and McLaren. So you ended up with this, those are like $2 million engines, a $2 million thing that just doesn't work. Oops. And it's kind of like this on a smaller scale. Even if there is a miscommunication, this part is what four uh, four five you could hours make, to print? You could cut it way down to, and it only costs dollars. Dollars, yeah. Now the other interesting thing when he was here, super cool guy by the way, is I showed him some of this stuff. What is this? That's Ultim Ten Ten. That's Ultim Ten Ten. I told him it's temperature resistance, chemical resistance, how nicely it prints, how it can hold pressure. His eyes lit up, and he realized. There's so many things I can use this for. Could I do this? Could I do this? And pretty much all the responses were yes. So hopefully we'll get to work with him some more. I'm just going to be honest here. I think another cool thing is you're going to start seeing Ultim under hood parts as a very high prestige thing. Because, yeah, you could have it milled in aluminum. But at one, it's beautiful. But it's going to be... A super exotic thermoplastic that takes skill to make. And I think it's going to be, you know, yeah, I could have made it out of aluminum, but I made it out of straight Ultim 1010. I'm super, super excited to hopefully get some under hood parts made for, for yeah. Mike. Um, he came in and was trying to break this. Yeah, this is vase mode with a 0.4 nozzle. Yeah, it's like literally one layer and it's incredibly strong. If you've printed something. <laughs> If you printed one of these in like on PLA or ABS, it's gonna cru it's gonna crush instantly in your hand. But what if I could stand on this? Chat, what do you think? Hey, I've already hurt myself plenty. Face mode, Ultim, 0.4 nozzle, right? This, everyone knows this face. I'm gonna stand on it. Okay. I'm gonna go slow. But ready? Support a little bit. No hands? That's, I'm, two, I'm over 200 pounds. That's cool. You think that could work as a downpipe or something? Yeah, I think so. Part of your intake assembly? I think so. I think it's strong enough. Anyway, he said, I don't think we might have a clip of it. This seems like the future of motorsports. And I got so excited when he said that because I agree. I do a lot of work on my car. I have a old Mercedes-Benz that I'm redoing. And there are so many parts. Because I work in this industry, I'm like, I can just print that. And it'll look OEM. I can print that, body kit even. ABS, put it together, vapor smooth it, sand it, whatever you want to do, I can make the part. I printed a bunch of clips to replace some of my, they're called like Sacco panels, but on our Fuse 1, I can't find these clips anymore. If some nice guy made them on Thingiverse, I printed a bunch of them. And now I can put my car back together instead of hunting down these parts. 
I think the main takeaway from this is the use of 3D printing in motorsports is, is about to blow up. It does seem like the future. One, because of what Matt talked about, how this saves time and money, rapid iterations, but also these materials are exotic enough now, like this TPI, 245 degrees Celsius glass transition temperature. It can withstand any chemical a car has thrown at it. Actual usable under hood parts can be made and are more than strong enough that you can 3D print. I don't think a lot of people realize that yet. So hopefully we're going to show you guys what can actually be done. And I think this is super exciting. Well, I've always wanted to meet Mike too. So that was yeah. cool. Uh, hopefully we can go to his shop. But the biggest thing going on here is that the innovation in 3D printing is it, additive in general is going faster than the audience or the industry can actually keep track of and educate themselves on. Because the, the materials coming out are so exotic, so crazy. It takes a lot of innovation to find ways to use additive because you have to think in a completely different way than you would have with CNC or subtractive, which everyone is used to and works really well. But it takes a whole new thought process that people are starting to grasp and we're starting to see ingenious designs that, that can say, like you said, save money, make it in the pit. If you're looking for an industrial 3D printing or 3D scanning solution, we carry a number of options over at visionminer.com, including our venerable 22 IDEX that's sitting right behind me, currently printing some PSU. And speaking of motorsports, it also printed this NACA duct that's currently on a Porsche race car. So if you are looking for an industrial 3D printing or 3D scanning solution, hit us up. We will help you find the right solution, even if it's something that we do not carry. And with that out of the way, back to the video. Actually, this is not a new thing at all. And the reason you haven't heard about it is because it is that much of a technical advantage that teams, racing teams and companies are really trying to hide their cards, keeping, keeping them close as to um, what they're doing with it. We have kind of heard through other 3D printing manufacturers that a number of gigantic teams use high temp thermoplastics in their cars because you can rapidly iterate new parts. And then another thing too that one of our material scientists has added is with 3D printing compared to other forms of manufacturing, you can add customization to every single part with little to no extra cost. It's just a little bit extra cost of material. Like let's say for some reason, this is a motorsport parts. Um, we want to add a fin to this for aerodynamics. The aerodynamicists have told us like, oh, if we add this, it'll give us 20 extra pounds of downforce. Print it. You don't need to retool your assembly line. You don't need to do anything. You just print it. You can take a printer like the 22 IDEX on the road with you as you go to the, and, and, and literally be, start printing as soon as you get there and yeah. be able to, that's what's happening. And you're right. No one knows about it. And I think that's exactly why, but. Let's bring this technology into, man, I can think of so many use cases. You know what? We're just going to have to do it. Yeah. We're just going to have to make some parts and show you guys. Oh, yeah. Actually, I got a ton of ideas. Well, also, like, just in the, in the world of motorsports, you're just constantly it, iterating on new parts all the time, race to race, maybe even session. To, you could even do session to session with 3D printing with something like this. Let's say you're testing new designs for intakes. That's always an area that teams are innovating on. You can see with the air boxes and whatnot on F1 cars, when they accidentally get shown, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. You could reiterate the internals of that, add vortex generators, but you could just add them on the spot. Let's say we're a little slow in free pra practice one. Well, we get this part designed, we could have it in qualifying the next day. McLaren, I believe was the first team to have a 3D printing sponsor and that was Stratasys initially. And if I recall, they, were, they had Stratasys machines in their pits, in the garage, Makes that sense, were printing yeah. extra parts. I think there's also a clip of it. I think it actually is CF Nylon. It's a CF Nylon component that goes in the front suspension of their 2016 or 2017 F1 car. We have kind of insider knowledge on teams that are buying high temp FDM machines to print under the hood components. 
I think earlier I said that this is the future of motorsports. Is this, this is the present of motorsports. It's the present of motorsports, but I think the future, which we are kind of getting hints on from some of the new engine manufacturers in regards to the 2026 F1 regulations, is that it's no longer just these plastics and it's no longer top of the engine applications. It's it's just it's it's all over the engine because I know Ford and Honda have also c- have confirmed that they are using 3D printed metal straight up in the engine. There's a Honda article actually that's written all in Japanese and it has a lot of pictures and diagrams. They 3D printed a turbo. They what? They 3D printed a turbo. Out of what? Metal. What? what? I believe titanium in Canal, something like that. Oh my God, that's so sick. I need to yeah. see that. It's really cool, but it's also kind of hilarious because um, they had to print it, on, you print it on a metal block and I believe it's sintered on there, but you still have to have support material. <laughs> So, um, so it's not powder bed. I don't think it's powder bed. It's it's one of the SLM machines. Interesting. Oh yeah. We'll yeah. Have to, yeah. Let's figure. Let's talk about that too. Yeah. That's super cool. But it's also it's kind of funny because the support materials because it's metal. You can see like an engineer with like a hammer and a pick just like the going ham. Angle grinder. Yeah. <laughs> trying to remove that. So like there still is a bit of a process, obviously. But the fact that you can three D print that and also like look at it like this way. To develop a turbo and whatnot and just get all these crazy shapes, that would take so much longer in a subtractive um, manufacturing form versus you could just print a, quite a few of these turbos and test them out. Who's the car manufacturer that's straight up metal 3D printing their cars? Oh, Singer? C Singer? Yeah. 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 How, how are they doing? Oh, we covered this, like, actually yeah, in the, well, one of the earlier talks. I heard about it. Now I don't hear anything about it anymore. Well, yeah. So essentially, like, the whole story behind uh, Singer is, C. Singer, is they are pretty much the offshoot of Divergent 3D, who make metal 3D printers. And the father and son that started that company, very big car guys, they wanted to prove the 3D printing technology in something tangible. So they decided to make a car. Yeah. And they didn't just stop at like, oh, let's 3D print a couple components here and there. No, they're, the frame is done with generative AI, which is something that is more feasible with 3D printing. It's my good, yeah, lots of generative, meaning lightweight and still just as strong, but man, are they beautiful. Yeah, and it's crazy because um, with this, you can combine parts and whatnot. So there's a, I, we have a reel that I recorded a couple years ago that we posted and a lot of, I got a lot of flack for it because what I was explaining was that this was a suspension upright, a brake caliper, and a bunch of other things combined into one. And people couldn't really wrap their heads around like, no, you can't just combine all this stuff. It's like, well, now you can with 3D printing. Combine your parts. The Seizinger, I imagine, the 21C, which is the car they make, I imagine that it, in its current iteration, probably has significantly less parts than a traditional hypercar of some sorts. Integrated upright and brake component. Jeez. Yep. I don't like when people usually look at the audience and do this, but <laughs> if you have a good idea or something you've always wanted to print for your car or you didn't even think could be printed, write it down below and let's, let's give us a challenge, right? We should come up with a show where it's automotive. Kamisa, reach out, dude. I'd love to work with you. We're going to come up. I'm going to get a name right now. I need a clever name for a 3D printing show based on cars. Printing pistons. Printing pistons. <laughs> Filament and fuel. Anyway, I love doing this stuff because that's what I'm passionate about, and so is Matt. And I'd love to make more content like this for you guys. So if you want to see more of it, the only way we'll know is leave a comment or subscribe or like and, and give us topics for another show because this is what we love to do, and we do it every day. I go home and work on my car. I 3D scanned my wheels yesterday to make a cut. The list goes on. I'll just show you in the next episode. I don't work on my car. I just drive the absolute piss out of it. Mine's in pieces. There's two types of guys. All right. Th- thanks, guys. <laughs> this is Cole with Print Shifts and Power Drift. Signing up. <laughs> Drift. These don't stop, dude. Turbos and thermoforming, filament fury and fast machines. Subscribe.